Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm not sure. I've been doing this all day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just say FYI, just say FYI, I'm recording this session so others can um, view it later. Good. What is OER? Um, it's open educational resources. So these oh. are basically free resources um, that you can find on the internet. Um, and so yeah, I'll go over that um, in a little bit. Good, something I can use. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching uh, at College of the Canyons this semester uh, in, uh, in addition to West and um, all our books are OER. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a they have a great um, setup over there uh, in terms of OER. Um, I'm actually the liaison for West for the uh, Academic Senate for California Community Colleges. Wow. And yeah, and our um, um, our contact uh, through Area C um, works at uh, College of the Canyons. So, yeah, I'm trying to make all my classes OER. Yeah. Wow. A good way to go. Yeah, if you'd like to, you can go ahead and sign in the chat so you can get credit uh, for attending today's session. So that way we have a record of it. And this meeting is being recorded uh, so others can view it later. I'm gonna... Um... Stop videoing, video, videoing myself. Okay. But I'm here. We're going to wait a couple of minutes so um, people can show up. Um, uh, I know that there was a meeting uh, on Canvas, to tips and tricks for using Canvas. Yes. Dion yeah. was delivering uh, last, so it may take um, people a while to get to this. Um, to get to yeah, this. Yeah, there, there were questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Mariah. Hi, Sandy. Nice to see you. Have you been following me around? <laughs> I've been following you and Ryan around all day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Raquel is, is I, she's been in two. Yeah.
So last time I checked, I think there were about 24 people that signed up. So we're at about half now, about 13. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer here. <laughs> Hello all, um, as you come in, just uh, be sure to sign into the chat so you get credit for Flex Day or Flex Week. Hi, Bernice. Long time missing. Hold on, let me unmute myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if my back is going to take this. I've been at this all day. If you see me bouncing up and down, oh, oh. Uh, please forgive me. I, I may not make it through the whole thing. And I, I don't need to flex credit. I just always like to hear what's going on, but I may not make it. I, I keep hoping. <laughs> uh, Bernice, we're also recording this session so um, others can view it later. Um, so where, would we, where do we find those recorded messages? Um, I'll have to check with Leslie. I'm not quite sure where they're going yeah, to be posted. I just asked that question of Leslie okay. from the previous session. I don't know if you heard of me or not. It, uh, so the answer is, if you send e her an email, she might be able to give you the rough copy, but she said they will be posting to YouTube ultimately, but they have to you know, clean everything up. So probably if you emailed her, you could get the version that comes out before the real deal. Because I asked that about Deanna's uh, sem seminar this past hour, and uh, that was my question as well. That was sort of the answer I got. But I, I'm not going to be able to make it through. I, I, I think I'm asking a little more of myself than I can handle. So please forgive me. I, I pay attention to your emails, though, when you send them out. I'm not going to sign in, and I'm going to let myself out of here. Because I, okay. I don't think I'll make it. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Have a nice there. evening. Same to you guys. There's Leslie. She can answer the question for you now. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Leslie, are you there? Yes. Hi. It's uh, Sandra again, and I was not able to sign in in time for my two courses this morning. Where can I find the recordings of those two courses, or were they recorded? The two were. Workshops. Let me double check. Um, I really wanted to take ethnic studies, and that I couldn't do. And nor student services, which I think is important to know about. Yeah, I think um, ethnic studies was definitely recorded, so okay. I can double check to see if it's been added to the. Um, it, it may be on another day, also. Um, ethnic studies. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't think we're repeating that, uh, workshop. Okay. Was, yeah, right. but I can, um, can you send me an email just so that I, sure, sure. I can and then I could, you remember. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Or smell, or spell Snyderwin. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And Leslie, um, I set up the meeting to auto record, uh, when I started it. So it's been recording. Um, so just FYI. That's totally fine. We can just crop it. Crop mm -hmm. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everybody, be sure to sign in the chat so you get credit for Flex Week. Um, so I'm going to start soon here. About a min another minute or so.
Henry Feiner. Hmm. Hello, Yervant. You're muted. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. How's everything? Going along. Summer's Great. getting shorter and shorter. I know. Good to hear that. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Okay. I think I'm about ready to start now. Um, Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Edwards. As you know, I work in the library and the systems librarian. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to adopt OER uh, uh, for your courses at West. Um, in the chat, I put a link to the presentation um, so you can follow along. Uh, this is already online. Uh, it's on my LibGuide. Um, I'll put a link uh, in the chat uh, to that as well. Uh, let me pull that up now. Oh, here's the link. So there's the link to my LibGuide. Um, I'm first going to go through the PowerPoint, um, and then I'll cover the LibGuide afterwards uh, to go over uh, URLs. Um, so let me share my screen. Okay. second here. Okay. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, this is in PDF format. Um, I converted my PowerPoint to PDF so I could, um, it, it would be easier to present um, because I'm going to be showing a lot of URLs going to a lot of different websites. Um, so I just wanted to put it in that format. Um, so this, this talk is about adopting OER at West. As you can see from this screen, this is a screen for our search box in the library. Um, and this is actually linked to, uh, if you were to click on this, it would go to our library catalog and search for OER or open access uh, content as well. Um, and so that's a quick way you can search for OER in the library catalog. You go to the library website, which is wlac.edu slash library. Um, then in the search box, you can type in OER. OER can be um, in caps, it can be lowercase, it can be, you can spell it out oh, as open educational resources, um, however you want to, and then you click search, uh, and then we'll bring up the, um, the OER content. Uh, so we have that. So in addition to that, we have this Ask a Librarian link. Um, if you have any problems um, accessing uh, OER resources, you can contact a librarian 24 seven. We also have a new service that we're offering. It's called Schedule a Research Appointment. So you, if you needed help um, with research, if students need help with research, they can, um, they can use that service as well. So why adopt OER? OER before we begin, OER is our open educational resources. And basically these are free resources um, that are offered. Um, so why adopt OER or open educational resources? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to promote equity. We we'll want to help students save money on textbook costs. Here at West LA, we save students already over a million dollars um, in textbook costs by using OER materials in textbooks. Um, so this is, this is a great way to promote equity. Um, it's probably been more than a million dollars now. It's probably probably close to $2 million. Um, also, we'd like to increase enrollment. This is a great way to increase enrollment um, because if a student is, um, is, is, you know, is applying and gets into the community college um, and they get to go to community college for free for two years, um, but say like they have a very expensive um, textbook for um, uh, for science or for math, um, and they have a choice of 
of buying that textbook or um, using a zero textbook cost uh, um, uh, a course and, and textbook, um, they're going to choose that, right? Because they're going to want to pay zero. They're not going to want to spend, you know, 150 to 300 dollars on that textbook uh, when they can pay, they can spend zero. So this, I think, will increase enrollment. Um, it's it's a good way for us to to focus on that. Also, OER um, promotes uh, higher grades and retention. Um, you know, because they're retained in the course. Uh, they get higher grades. Uh, I'll go over that in a little bit as well. How do we, now I'm going to talk about how do we adopt OER? Uh, so there, there are two main ways to adopt OER. Well, there are more ways than that, but I'm going to go over two. One is to search Canvas Commons. If you're in the, um, the search, if you're in Canvas, you can search uh, Canvas Commons. And I'm going to show that in a minute. Um, you can also use uh, George uh, Mason University's Mason OER MetaFinder. And this is a federated search tool that searches across 16 different repositories, OER repositories at once. So it's like a super search and you can find OER contact that way. Here are some of the OER software vendor platforms. There's OER Commons, the Ecotex is a new vendor we've been, I've been speaking to. Uh, there's Libertex, there's Pressbooks, there's OpenStax College, uh, Open uh, Textbook Library and Open SUNY Textbooks. Um, and all these are listed on my um, libguide and we'll go over that in a minute. OER accessibility. The accessibility of OER content varies. Um, you'll notice that you know some content you find on um, uh, different sites uh, is not as accessible um, as other content on other sites. Uh, for instance, you may have found content on the Hathi Trust site, which is more um, which is more accessible than the content found on uh, another site. Um, so keep this in mind when you're selecting OER uh, content. Uh, you want to stay steer away from PDFs unless they're completely compliant. Um, and you should. It's better to use like HTML because HTML is better to fix. It's be, it's easier to fix the problems um, with the OER content in HTML uh, versus a PDF. Um, and you can use Canvas to help you do that with the accessibility checker, um, as well as Pope Tech. Um, so it's advisable to use HTML um, over PDF. Um, but if you have to use PDF, then you'll need to get it remediated. Um, and I'll go into that in, in a little bit, the different options for um, remediation. So there are possible uh, remediation ways of uh, of remediating inaccessible OER or open educational resources. Um, there's software that you can get um, free uh, from the uh, community California Community Colleges. It's uh, called Equidox, and that can be used to um, convert a PDF into HTML. Um, there are other um, software uh, vendors as well. Uh, one of the software vendors I'm speaking to now is uh, Common Look uh, PDF. Um, they have they have a free uh, demo of their software, training and software for six months. Um, and so the district is uh, the the district actually asked me about it, um, and I forwarded the information to them. So they're also looking at it um, as a possible. Uh, solution to um, to remediate these PDFs. Among the, they're also looking at other systems as well. They have a RFP or a request for a proposal for that, so they're busy doing that now, um, evaluating the different con different software. In terms of submitting OER content or open educational resources content, uh, you want to keep in mind that you'll need to um, select a Creative Commons license. Um, there are different licenses. I'll go over that in a little bit when I go over my libguide. Um, so you can submit your course to Canvas Commons. You can work um, with uh, Cyrus 
Um, he can help you upload your course to uh, Canvas Commons, you know, once you have that Creative Commons licensing. Um, and it's a, a pretty quick process. He, uh, he's he's pretty, pretty well versed in um, Canvas technology, so he can help you with that. Um, and then there are also OER software vendors. So if you wanted to submit your, um, your textbook to say Libertex or to Pressbooks, um, you could work with work with a vendor, um, and they can walk you through um, uh, of submitting your content to uh, uh, to their software platforms. Um, here, I've listed some other OER open educational resources here. Um, recently, I wrote an article making OER discoverable in OneSearch, which is our library system. Um, and so I have a link to that article here. Um, that was for the, Cal the Council of California Community Colleges Chief Librarians uh, newsletter. Um, and then I also have a link to my LibGuide here, um, which I'm going to go over next. So let me go back up. Next, I'm going to go over my LibGuide. Um, Just a second. Let's stop the share for a second here. Okay, can everybody see my lip guide? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so you can find this lib guide a variety of ways. You can search it on our library website. Um, if, for instance, if I were to, to go to uh, West LA uh, or WLAC.edu, um, and then you click on library, which is at the bottom of the uh, right hand side of your screen, that'll take you to the library website. Um, let me see if I can show that here. So I go to WLAC. There's our uh, the West LA College's website. If you scroll down here to library, click on library, that'll bring up our library website. Um, and there are different, there are different ways to get to this, uh, to this OER libguide. You could just type in OER if you wanted to, as I, as I was uh, talking about before, and this will bring up OER resources. There's suggested databases here. Here's my libguide right here. Um, so if you were to click that, it would open up into my libguide. There are also um, other suggested resources, suggested databases. Um, here that you can search. My, uh, there's my contact email if you wanted to contact me about OER, and you should if you're if you're interested in um, in, uh, in pursuing that those types of materials. You should you should definitely contact me. A lot of people have been contacting me about uh, different subject areas, so um, it's it, it's a good it's a good thing to to, to consider. Um, so there's that. Um, so going back to my libguide. This is my libguide that I've developed um, for open educational resources. This defines what OER is. Um, a lot of this content I've taken from other sites. For, um, a lot of this content is taken from SUNY, SUNY site. Understanding open educational resources. This goes into what is OER. Um, so like it resides in the public domain or has been released under an intellectual property license, such as a Creative Commons license that permits their free use and repurposing by others. And it may include other resources that are legally available and free of cost to students. So that's basically a definition of what OER is. Um, there's more information here from the, um, the Hewlett Foundation about OER. Uh, these are the five R's of OER, retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. Um, this is also taken from CUNY site. Here's a video on OER licensing. Here's some supporting research on, on OER and uh, affordability. Um, so, you, so you can go into that. Um, there is a link here to uh, benefits for using uh, OER, why use OER. There, this is a great video on, on, on how to, uh, you know, what the benefits of, uh, of OER and saving students money. Um, by Dr. Uh, Cable Green um, from the Florida Virtual Campus. Here's another video that I have here. I'm not going to play these videos because um, 
the with a bandwidth it, it might not come come through the right way but um they're there if you want to look at them on your own um they're short videos um here's another video on why using oer oer research findings it's uh, studies show that students using oer demonstrated higher retention rates you know because they have a free textbook you know um they don't have to to switch to a a, um, a, a, pay, a paid textbook, there this, this contributes to higher enrollment. More students want to enroll because, you know, the cost is less. And, you know, um, and they get better grades as well. They're focused on the material. A lot of this OER can be revised. Um, you can import into your course. You can revise it, and then you can redistribute it. Uh, and students can even contribute to the development of the OER in your course. You can say, hey. Um, for your assignment, I want you to revise chapter two um, of uh, this uh, uh, biology course um, by going out and searching for journal articles on a specific bi biology topic, um, and then you can update the chapter of our book. So th there are ways of doing that, and that was discussed by uh, Dr. Cable Green um, in that short video. Um, there are also research OER research findings. This is from El Camino College. 90% of faculty said OER texts were of the same or greater quality than OER texts. 90% uh, of students said that OER text was as good or better than non-OER text. This was taken from El Camino College insight. So a lot of this content I've taken from different areas. Um, next, I'm going to discuss how to find OER. There's a video here. Uh, this is a recent video um, that Cyrus made about how to find uh, zero textbook cost classes in the course catalog. Uh, so I encourage everyone to look at that. This is a video for finding OER resources and importing OER resource uh, OER courses into Canvas. Uh, I co-deliver this with Cyrus. It's about an hour long, so I'm not going to play it now because it's it, it goes, but it goes into the specifics on how to import can, um, courses into Canvas through Canvas Commons. This is a custom um, search box that I created that I hard coded. Um, just to search uh, open access content within our library catalog. Open access content is how our library vendor Ex Libris um, defines uh, this, this open content. Um, and within it is uh, um, uh, OER, open educational resources within that sphere of, of um, open access content. So you could search everything, you could search uh, for articles, you could search for books. Here are some collections that I've um, activated within our library catalog for the Open Textbook Library, Open Sax College, Open SUNY Textbooks, and you can click on these links and it will take you right to the collections. Um, there's information here about using a Google Advanced Search. Um, and then there are these Search different search tools that you can use. One of them is the Mason Metadata Finder. This is the one that I use um, mostly because it's just it's just fantastic. So if I wanted to search for, let's say, um, and I search normally in the full record here, um, I find that that's a better way to search. And so if I wanted to search on like global warming, I could type that in. You could do title, author, keyword as well, date range. And you can select which of these repositories you want to search. I'm just going to search them all. So it's going to search Hathi Trust and JSTOR and Merlot and uh, OpenStax and OER Commons all at once. So I'm going to click this search button. And what this will do now is it will do a federated search across these 20 or so resources, search them all at the same time, and bring back those search results. Um, as you can see, I already have up to about 67,000 search results on it's still going here. Um, it's still still searching here, as you can see up here. Um, and in a minute, it's going to ask if I want to add more results. See, there's 125 that were just found. And so you can wait until this is done. Um, and then you can say, OK, add these results or don't add these results. I'm going to add these results. And so now I have about 67,000 results up here. Um, and I hear the top uh, 801 uh, top search results. And these things on the side here, these are called um, facets or limiters. So you can limit it by date range. 
you can limit this by uh, different clusters. Um, which are like topics or authors or publications, document type. You have all these different, you know, different formats you can uh, you can limit it by. And say if I were interested in this book, I could just click this link and it goes right to DPLA, which is the Digital Public um, Library of America. And so you could view this like audio clip if you wanted to. Um, it, it's it, you know it's that easy to. To, to get to this content. If you wanted to share all the search results, so say you were searching for a course and or a, a course topic, you could click this share search uh, button here. You could select this whole thing right here, do a control C and then a control V like in your email. Um, and then this, this will be a static link or a permanent link to all these um, search results. Um, so it's really that easy to find things. It's, it's incredibly useful. Um, and uh, uh, a good thing about the search tool um, is that you don't necessarily need to be logged in. Some of these tools you need to be logged in, like in Merlot or you know, maybe Smart Search, you might need to, need to be logged in to, actual, to actually do a search. Um, so there's that. The, the nice thing about this um, uh, uh, finder here as well is that it provides a visual search. So you can, search these, uh, uh, review these results visually. So if I wanted to say environmental, I could click on that and then it will limit your uh, search result to environmental. So you can just dive down into like, here's biology. I can dive down in biology. So I've gone down to environmental and biology and now there are uh, three different things here um, that I can look at. So it's very useful. It's one of the best, um, I think, tools out there uh, for searching for OER. Um, there's also this Merlot Smart Search. Um, this was uh, spoken about recently at uh, uh, the Cal OER conference. Um, and you can search across uh, Merlot collections. Um, the, uh, this shows what Smart Search is. You can search by ISBN materials, um, et cetera. Um, and so you can use that tool as well. Um, there's Ecotex. Ecotex is another vendor that I've been um, speaking to. Um, they support collaborative learning and uh, uh, really um, social, they, they kind of integrate the social uh, media platforms with OER. Um, so you can, so it's re really good for students to communicate with each other about OER resources. So you can just search that. You can create an account here if you want to. Um, you'll probably want to do that to search their free resources. They have about 75,000 uh, resources and they, they take content from the different software vendors as well, like OpenStax, um, et cetera. This is a new site, OpenPolySci. This was demoed at uh, the Cal OER conference. This is for political science. Um, it's a site uh, generated by a, a faculty member um, and you can, you can look for uh, OER content. That way you can also limit, you can search it by, these are different Creative Commons licenses that you can search, or say if you were searching or, or if you wanted something on political theory, you could click that. Um, and then um, information comes up here about uh, different content that you can use. Um, so this was kind of a homegrown system that was generally uh, uh, recently created. There are different shells for Canvas, et cetera. So it's something to look at uh, for political science. There are other sites here as well. There's Open uh, Washington Repository of OER content. I'm not going to go into all these, but um, there's information from San Mateo Community College District here. Um, Libertex is one of the um, uh, software platforms um, that's used quite a bit. Um, recently, I, I, I'm on the um, Ex Libris um, uh, Users of North America users group uh, for, for Primo, which is our library search system. And recently, I advocated uh, to add Libertex to our central discovery index and to Alma, which is our library system. Uh, so it can be used in, um, in course reserve lists. Um, and so 
my article um, that I spoke about before goes into what I, you know what I did in endorsing the the product. I got a certain number of votes, and the X Libris is now looking into integrating um, this software platform into their library search system. And remember, this library search system is used uh, uh, amongst two thousand plus libraries. All the UCs use it. All the CSU use it. Um, all the California Community Colleges uses it, Harvard uses it, USC uses it, major consortia use it. It is the dominant system out now. So if you really want to get it searched, uh, a good way is to add it to this library system. And so that's what I, I did. Recently, there was um, a recent NERS um, uh, a vote, which is an enhancement vote for the software. Um, unfortunately, LibreText didn't make it into the top 10. Um, but there's still that uh, idea exchange uh, post that I that I put in, and uh, X Libris is looking at that now. Press Books did make it into the top ten with our NERS uh, vote, which is great because there was a um, there was a, a textbook uh, co-written by several of the California community colleges about information literacy and how to do searching in um, uh, for, for library uh, research as well as within the Canvas search system. Um, so you might wanna look at that. It's a good Pressbooks um, link. There are other sites here. Um, I have, uh, there's open, there's open stacks. There's, well, this is commonly used amongst um, professors to search for uh, information. So say, hey, I wanna search algebra, uh, uh, algebra and trigonometry. So I'm gonna click on that. Here's a whole open uh, source course that you can use, table of contents. You can download um, the content. You can download a uh, PDF, you know, HTML is better, but anyway, you can do that. Um, and you can just dive right in into this book, this textbook. Um, there are instructor resources that they provide. Um, so you can load a Canvas course cartridge or Blackboard or, you know, we, we use Canvas. Um, there are OER Commons resources here, PowerPoint slides. There's a wealth of content here that you can use. Um, um, there are also student resources up here. There are resources for students. This is all online, all free. So there's a student getting started guide, note-taking guide, et cetera. And so students can look at this as well. So it's really that, that, that simple to find the content. Just remember that it needs to be accessible, um, this content. And sometimes there is inaccessible content and you need to make it accessible. So, um, so, so I'll go into that in a minute. Um, recently, I updated my LibGuide. Um, I have included this OER by uh, discipline, uh, Ugo Schufelt, um over in social sciences. She wanted me to, um, uh, to create this, you know, OER by discipline. Originally on our WLAC OER lib uh, on our site, not our lib guide, but our site, um, we were using LA Valley Colleges uh, OER by discipline. So if you click this OER by discipline here, you can see Los Angeles Valley College. Um, they took their content from San Bernardino Valley College. Um, so a lot of this content's out there already. You don't have to recreate it, it already exists. Here's LA Valley College. Here are all the um, resources um, they provide for the different subject areas like accounting and uh, chemistry and child development and computer science and you know Italian studies and uh, math, et cetera. So you can just go down here and look at start looking at things. Like if I want to take English, you can it, it'll it'll dive down into the OER textbooks they use at LA Valley College. Um, anthologies and readings, um, different courses that you can use. These are taken from the Ivy League, uh, uh, Yale University, which is an Ivy League school. Um, so basically <laughs> you're getting an Ivy League education for zero um, by using that course. Um, there's different content from Lumen um, and there are additional resources here as well. So there's that. So going back to my LibGuide, um, what I've done here is I've um, I've basically scraped the content. So let me go back here to this. 
Um, so basically what I did is I just copied their content. So if you go to child development, that way you don't have to go to their site. I just, you know, copied their content that they have from their LibGuide and I put it all here. So it's just easy access for you. Uh, and I made it, um, some of these uh, images weren't quite accessible. So I made them accessible in the LibGuide because everything has to be accessible. Um, so there's the child development, textbook courses, additional resources. Here's one for communication studies. Again, I just updated this today. Um, here's one for economics, uh, for, for Olga, um, economics, political science, um, history. Uh, here's, here's one for English. I just updated that today. Um, so I've just kind of picked and choose amongst the lists that LA Valley College has and just copy their content. So, um, but if you wanted to see all of it, you could just go back here to OER by discipline and say, okay, Los Angeles Valley College, there it is. It's the same content, I just copied it um, just to make it easier, just to highlight certain areas here. But we need to start really looking at this. Um, there is $115 million coming from the state of California in the budget to develop a zero textbook cost courses. Um, what's going to happen here is they're going to issue grants. I think the grants are going to be about $200,000 each for um, the colleges to develop uh, these ZTC or zero textbook uh, cost pathways and degrees. Um, so we need to start thinking about this. You know, it's coming up here um, and I'll show that in a, in a minute. Here's some information about accessibility. This was taken from Butte College. Uh, Butte College has an excellent LibGuide on OER. Um, where to start, um, section D of the CVC OEI course design rubric. This is what we use in poker. This is, uh, there are certain sections in poker or peer online course review sections A through D. And most of the problems or most of the courses that I've reviewed have had problems with the accessibility portion in Canvas. Um, so section D is described here and it goes into all the uh, different requirements you need uh, to pass accessibility for poker or peer online course review. And remember, peer online course review markets your course. It puts it up with the logo up in uh, uh, the top of the search results. And it's, it's, a, it's a good thing for promoting your courses, even your adjunct um, courses. So it's, it's a good way to get that information out there. There's some training accessibility tools that they have here listed. Um, um, for you know, different software, there's a bunch of them. There's um, accessibility courses and webinars they have here, uh, videos on, on understanding accessibility um, and additional accessibility resources here. Um, so it's really, it's a good thing to look at because they have it all there. It's, it's easy, it's, it's already created. I didn't have to create any of this content. It was there, I just took it or I just redirected to it. Here's adapting and authoring. Here's information like if you're an author, if you're a uh, faculty and you wanna share your book uh, with a software platform, they have creation, adaption, authoring. We are starter kit, the different publication uh, platforms like LibreText, Pressbooks, et cetera. And there's some videos here about licensing um, as well uh, for that. Copyright licensing, again, going back to Butte College's uh, uh, LibGuide, uh, they go over the different types of Creative Commons licensing. Um, so there's the, the share alike, um, there's, you know, the, the, the different, the different um, uh, 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 Creative Commons licenses that you can choose from on Creative Commons' site. Um, so you can go through all these and determine which one you want to use. Um, but you know, uh, generally a share alike is, is a good one to use unless you have content that you don't wanna share. Um, there are some restri more restrictive licenses here like this uh, CC by NC and D. Um, so there's that. Uh, here's a chart about a license comp compatibility chart that they have that really goes into um, the licensing and um, in more detail. Um, and that's taken from another site as well. So there's all that information there. Um, and then here's our OER resources page. This is the West uh, OER resources page. There's uh, information here about textbooks, course outlines, media, um, what makes good OER, rubrics for evaluating OER, integrating OER materials, adapting OER, testimonials. And this is all LA Valley colleges 
um, list here for OER content um, that I took um, and uh, copied, well, specific portions of it to the guide. Um, and then I also have this professional development link here. Um, we have an OER uh, FIG campus shell. Uh, so you can learn about OER. This is within Canvas. You can click that. You can enroll in that um, and, 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 and go over the content within Canvas. Here's the uh, video about how to o uh, import OER uh, courses from the Canvas Commons that I co-delivered with uh, Cyrus recently. Um, here's the article um, that I wrote, Making OER Discoverable in OneSearch. Um, here's a presentation I gave for West LA about OER. Here's um, one, another one about promoting OER inequity that I gave um, at West LA. Here is this presentation, Adopting OER at West. Um, this is another presentation that um, I, I, I uh, participated in, LibGuys Discovery Tools and Websites, making OER discoverable for uh, libraries. It's a Academic Senate at California Community Colleges OER webinar. Um, here's, a, here's a presentation that I gave for the Ex Libris users of North America on making OER discoverable. Here's my recent presentation on making OER discoverable in Alman Primo, which is a library system for the recent Cal OER conference. And then there are other sites here as well. SUNY site, oh, they have a whole course on OER. Um, there's OER and online learning faculty quick start guide. You can look at that if you wanted to get you know, going with it. Uh, with OER, so it's that it's that simple. I've tried to put everything on this on this guide here, everything I can possibly think of, um, and all this guide is 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 harvested in our library system. So if you're in the library catalog and you type in OER, you can pull it up. If you type in WLA say lib guide, that'll bring up a bunch a uh, uh, list all our sixty plus lib guides. This is one of those lib guides that's included. Uh, so there's that. I'm going to stop now and take some questions. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone? I know that's a lot of information. I, I know it's a ton of information, but. Ryan, you um, did have a couple questions earlier. I can help you with okay. them. That'd be uh, great. Someone asked, uh, are there any grants or stipends available for incorporating OER into our classes? Um, I think that's going to be coming. Um, it hasn't been announced yet, but uh, 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 President Limbaugh really wants to get on this um, this opportunity um, because you know there are going to be these two hundred thousand dollar grants that we can apply for, um, and within that, that there may be stipends. Um, um, recently, or um, within the last couple of years, uh, there was a kind of a trial run. There was a five million dollar grant. Um, that was issued across the California community colleges and about 40 community colleges participated in that to develop uh, OER content. But now it's been increased to $115 million. So, you know, that that's really saying, you know, I mean, if you do the math, there are 115 community colleges, there's $115 million. It's about a million a piece, you know, but it won't really work that way and um, because the districts will take their cuts and stuff. But um, but there's a lot of money coming here to, to develop this stuff. So. OK, and then another question, this might require like follow up, but um, someone asked if you have discovered any OER course homework management systems. Uh, there are Libra Text is developing one now. Um, and so you, you can contact LibreTex and they could give you information about that or I could get you information about that as well. Um, there are, there are uh, software platforms that are developing this now, uh, uh, homework, uh, homework help systems. Yes. And then the last question I see are, are in the chat at least, are there any streamlined guides for CTE courses? Um, you know, I'd have to search for that. Um, you could you could you could just do a you could do a Google search. You could use the Mason um, uh, OER MetaFinder to to find that. Um, but yeah, there are the, the, there, and I encourage you to really look at those different subject areas that LA Valley College has. Um, so in San Bernardino College, uh, a lot of our colleges already have this. They already have ZTC degrees. They already have OER content. 
if you go to Saddleback College, they already have OER ZTC degrees. There are about 20 or 30 of them, I think. Um, and they've been doing this for years now. So um, this is this is something that that I think will in, help increase enrollment and in something that um, that we can start pursuing, you know, once these uh, grants are announced. Um, and, and really, President Limbaugh and uh, VP Archibald, Anthony Archibald, um, you know, they, they, they really want us to be on top of this, you know, and, and get this going. We want to be one of the first um, uh, colleges to, to pursue one of these grants. Um, so I'm trying to just, you know, come up with as much information as I can now. Um, another thing we have to do is we have to go to the bookstore and analyze all the textbooks, like a child development textbook might cost more than another type of textbook for another subject area. So we need to analyze all the textbooks, determine which ones are most costly, and then determine, you know, you know, what gaps we have in our library catalog for OER content. There's, there's a lot of work to be done, but it's going to cost money and, and, and professors are going to have to be paid to create this. The, the, these hours of content on Canvas and, you know, you, even textbooks. Uh, Pasadena City College has uh, recently um, introduced sabbaticals for faculty to develop OER textbooks. So you could, you could take a sabbatical, to develop your own textbook. I mean, there are things that are, are happening now across this area. And then you have a couple hands raised too. Um, Anthony, okay. do you want to go first? Sure. Um, great presentation, Ryan. It's um, just really want to acknowledge all the hard work you've been doing as the OER liaison. So thank you for everything you're doing for the college. And I had a quick question about some of the data that you um, verbally cited in your presentation, um, such as the um, OER usage at West is saving students over a million dollars, things like that. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you had that data um, accessible or if you were able to share that data. I'm just thinking of the quality focus essay and some other campus-wide um, initiatives and having that information would make writing those types of reports easier. I do have that data. Uh, Eric uh, shared it with me uh, before he left. Um, it was a little bit over a million dollars. It was like a million uh, forty thousand or so that was saved for students. There was a whole spreadsheet that went into the cost of the textbooks and the cost of OER and the savings. And um, I have all that information. Okay, great. Um, but Thank it you. was it was for a trial period when we first introduced the, introduced this. I think it was like twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen or a, a certain period. Um, so. Uh, it doesn't necessarily cover like 2018 to now. So, you know, by now we probably save students, you know, $2 million. I mean, I don't know. So. So it sounds like just following up with you via email would be a great way to kind of connect mm -hmm. and get some information. Yeah, okay. yeah I have that Thank information. You. Sure. All right. Perfect. And then Elizabeth, you're next. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of questions. What are your thoughts on uh, supplies, things that aren't texts? For example, I, I typed this in the, the chat. When I teach mm -hmm. astronomy lab, I have them purchase uh, something called a planisphere to determine where stars are going to be any time of the day, any time of the year. Right. And I also have them physically use star atlases, which I was able to find for 99 cents to $1.20 per paper atlas. Mm -hmm. But it's a consumable, so they're going to be writing all over it. They can't return it as, you know, to, to go for a used star atlas. But mm -hmm. it's really great hands-on, so it's graphing, using data, using metric rulers. But what I find online, um, it's not something we can do by hand. You know, there's 3,000 stars visible in the sky, and I can't go in there and draw 3,000 dots. Right. And I can find some stuff online, but it's so zoomed in that they would have to print out 30 to 40 of these and then paste them together. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of my students don't have printers. So I thought right. it would be easier just to purchase from the book bookstore and my entire course, because I have adopted OER really early on for some of my resources. The entire course costs the student that's under $20. Right. Um, you know, we're going to have to work with our bookstore. Um, there are different services like through LibreText called Lulu and their printing services. You can print out these entire textbooks 
Um, and it only costs a student like $20 versus $200 for a, a real published textbook. So there are things that we're going to have to work out, you know, uh, with the bookstore. We're going to have to work with them. This is really a campus effort. We're going to have to, um, you know, work together, you know, across our different departments, across counseling, across the bookstore, across the library. Uh, we're going to have to work together on this and uh, develop these resources. So, well, for example, like the Star Atlas, is there um, oversized 11 and I don't know what it's 17 by 11 ish. Mm -hmm. And if they were to print them, it'd be about 40 pages. It'd be the size of a dining table mm -hmm. and it would cost more than 99 cents to print right. all of those pages. So, you know, do I just give up on that? Do I change my curriculum? Things you know, like a, good, a good person to contact um, would be my uh, area C uh, liaison, who's my uh, kind of supervisor for OER. Her name is Jennifer mm -hmm. Paris. She's at the College of the Canyons. She may have more information. The College of Canyons is really on top of OER. They developed ZTC degrees already for, um, I think, for um, child development or, or early childhood education, I, I believe, um, or, or, and or OER resources. Um, but you know, you know, this is a this is a, a real uh, exciting area. I think we have a lot of opportunity to contribute to this area. Um, there are other libraries out there. I know they're using, um, uh, um, you, you know, you know, three D printing machines, you know, to develop um, uh, uh, objects for their courses that they use. Um, so, so this I might mean, be an opportunity to, for example, purchase as part of a lab grant, all of these star charts, get them laminated, and then maybe loan them to the students? And poss get them possibly, yeah. I, I, I don't know offhand, um, you know, what the solution would be. I'd have to think more about it. Um, but Jennifer would be a real resource. Jennifer Paris uh, at College of the Canyon, she'd be a real resource to to check with because she's she's the head of our area C, which is encompasses our uh, college in the in the LA CCD district here. Perfect. Yeah, I know I was getting picky because I'm trying to think we're we're trying to switch to completely OER no matter what. Yep. So also things as in well, if they need a ruler, does that mean that's not a completely OER course? I know it's nitpicky. Well, no, I think, I, yeah, I think that's great. I mean, if you look at the Cal, uh, I sent a recent email out to all faculty about the recent Cal OER uh, conference. Uh, one of the speakers there um, was uh, uh, Keith Curry. He's, he, you know, he's head of uh, Compton, uh, he's the president of Compton uh, Community, uh, Compton College. And what he wants to do is make, um, turn the whole college into OER by like 2045. I mean, all courses, everything. So, um, you know, but th this would happen in gradual steps. Um, you know, you do like 20% and then 40% and then, you know, 60%, 80%, 100%. And then you, you'd have it, it all be free. I mean, you know, you could hypothetically take a course, you know, from Yale or from Harvard it, or MIT um, and offer it for zero. I mean, it's, if it's free, if it's OER, if it's there, you know, I mean, there's all mm -hmm. sorts of possibilities we have here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more? Caleb, you had a question? Yeah, my question would be about maintenance. I mean, we get those, uh, I've been using OER material also. The only problem I find is if something, I mean, computer science, so right. things keep changing rapidly and those books are published once, but there's nobody maintaining them or updating them as right. life goes on. So that's one benefit I I'm doubting about OER because if it is a company that's paid, of course they charge you a lot of money, but you get the latest and something that even let's talk about Apple. Apple has Xcode. Xcode keeps changing. They have nice books, but the books don't keep up. By the time the book is published, Xcode has moved beyond where it was. So right. th these are the issues that I'm not very comfortable with OER. But for the right. most part, OER is great for students because it's free. I don't know how we resolve or how we address the maintenance issue like upgrading, updating the data that's published. 
And we're going to have to we're going to have to work on this as a system. You know, maybe part of the 115 million dollars will be to um, I mean I'm just guessing. I I don't know. Is to hire a vendor to take all our OER texts that are inaccessible from like. Uh, OpenStack, if there's some in OpenStax and make, put, put the, create them in accessible format. I mean, they're, you know, um, there are different software vendors that I'm looking at, Common Look PDF. Maybe the district will choose that um, software. Um, there is a lot of work though to, to be done for accessibility for those things that are not accessible and we're gonna have to work on it. I mean, it's, you know, unless, you know, we, we get district wide, you know, or the California Community Colleges to 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 um, support software that will fix it all for us. You know, um, there is I think there's software that the California Community Colleges is working on now for the accreditation uh, to make things accessible or a service. I'm not quite sure what it is, um, but these are things we're going to have to consider, not just amongst our college, but for the benefit of all our colleges. Also, just one more thing, since you're very comfortable and it's very easy for you to search, would I be able to come to you? Like if I search for something and don't find it, would you be able to help or- Absolutely, where do we go? absolutely. Oh, I'm our contact for the college. Thank so you, if you have any trouble, yeah, come contact me or- Thanks. I, I'm on email like 24 seven anyway. So- <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, well, not, maybe not 24 seven, but I'm, I'm on email all the time. You know, I'm constantly monitoring things because you know, I work in systems as well, so. You have another Hi. question in the chat, Ryan. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asked, will printed versions be available for students who prefer that media? They said home printing can get expensive. You know, that's something we're gonna have to talk to the bookstore about, like that Lulu service for, for Libre Text and printing out uh, uh, textbooks um, and maybe binding them, maybe laminating them. I mean, th these are conversations we're going to have to have. Yeah, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Ryan? Have there been have there been further conversations about very low cost rentals from the bookstore? We we had something similar to that a while back, and I think even the math department was doing like five dollar textbook rentals or mm -hmm. something to that effect. Yep, there are textbook rentals uh, through the bookstore. Um, you can also rent books on Amazon if you wanted to, or, um, you know, like there's a whole, there are all, a, a bunch of software vendors you can choose from for renting books. So, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, the materials ADA compliant? Mm hmm. So, yeah. So, in order to be, um, we're, just to give you an idea. Recently, um, we're having to update um, our, um, our our contracts with our software vendors for our subscription library databases. And basically, the district has said everything has to be accessible. Everything has to be w, you know WCAG 2.1 compliant. Um, and so we've had to develop. I've developed a libguide for our uh, library databases to. Um, show accessibility barriers for some of those library databases and how to get around that. Um, so there are different standards, you know, there's WCAG or, or WCAG uh, 2.1, uh, you know, Ryan Corner is kind of, you know, I think he's really leading this effort. Um, there's uh, Section 508. Uh, and there's a history behind this, you know, it started out with like Section 508, and then it went to um, like, I'm just saying WCAG maybe 2.0 and then 2.1. I may be skipping some of the uh, some of the standards, but you can find all this on the internet. I mean, it's all it's all documented. You can just do a Google search on it and find it. So, any other questions? I know that was a lot of information um, to absorb. Um, I can I can put my libguide um, for the EAPs in the chat. Um, so um, I'll find that in a minute, or I can send that out later. 
Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm even working with the district on developing that LibGuide for, you know, all nine community colleges, because we all use the same library databases. You know, we have all the same accessibility problems, or maybe not all the same accessibility problems, but when we encounter accessibility problems, we need to document this, you know, and so um, I've created a LibGuide for that. Um, uh, is one of the things I did this past summer, amongst other things. So <laughs> I, I worked as an adjunct for the, uh, for the library for the summer. So I, I was working on different projects. One more question, Ryan. Okay. Would you be able to go back again to Valley College, was it? You were showing us, I didn't know how you got there. Oh, sure, sure, I can go back to that. There are a variety of ways to get there. Let me share my screen. Um, so here I'm on my LibGuide. I go here to OER by discipline. And then I go to Los Angeles Valley College. And then there's the whole list. I mean, there's your computer science. Like if you want to do computer science, you just click, they have even computer apps and office tech uh, for like IT um, or, or, you know, so here's like, you know, different textbooks that they, um, that they've OER textbooks that they've provided here. Um, different courses that you can use. Here's MIT courseware. Here's, here's a, a course from Harvard um, on computer science um and additional resources as well excellent thank you thank you mm -hmm. sure any other questions i know we're probably going to break early here because i've gone through this pretty quickly but um we do have the recording so if you want to go back over this stuff um you can and feel free to contact me you know i know um anthony battle you know recently contacted me about uh, resources for paralegal program. Um, people have contacted me for, you know, resources about English and Spanish and all the different subject areas, you know, social sciences. I mean, this is a, you know, an area that we're going to need to explore and we're going to need to, we're going to need to work on different things here. Um, so it's, it's coming. <laughs> I want to say thank you also for all your help for the marketing. I had uh, emailed you uh, about a month ago. I ask about different marketing OERs and those websites definitely help there, but they were a little confusing trying to trying to figure it out on my own there. So definitely this is very helpful and showing exactly where to go and what tabs and things like that. So mm -hmm. thank you for the, the, the great follow up. No problem. Anyone else? Any other questions? We've got about 20 minutes left, but I guess we could break early. <laughs> Everybody's probably tired. I, I know I'm uh, <laughs> Uh, any other questions? I'm going to put my email address in the chat. Feel free to email me if you uh, have any follow up questions. Whoops, I sent it to someone here. There we go. There's my email address. Again, you have the links to the to the presentation, my libguide. It's all there. It's all up on the net. So, well, if there aren't any further questions, oh, Maria, go ahead. Oh no, I was just clapping. I was just <laughs> using the clap reaction. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, if there aren't any other questions, I think we'll just break early. Um, and we'll have the recording up there soon. Um, you know, as soon as it's edited and then um, we'll go from there. So thank you. Thanks everyone for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.